Hello my friends and welcome back to EVE Online with me Mark from Dadex and today we are going to continue our look at fitting your ship. We have a look at the modules, skills, implants and rigs that will affect the power grid and CPU capacity of your ship or reduce the demand of the modules you're fitting on it. First of all we're going to go to the fitting screen itself just to remind us and for you new bros you've got the CPU on your ship and the power grid on your ship and each module that you put on your ship is going to use up some CPU and or power grid to varying degrees. When it comes to rigs, that is limited by the calibration of the hull that you are trying to fit. In this case, it's 400. I can only fit two rigs on this ship because they use 200 each. That's really only something that I've ever found on scanning ships, to be honest with you, scanning frigates. There's nothing you can do to change the calibration of a ship. There's no skills or anything that can boost that or reduce how much those rigs are actually taking up. You will run into issues when you're using Tech 2 rigs because they'll use a lot more than the Tech 1 variants. You may then become a choice. But in terms of all the general modules, it's CPU and power grid and obviously having the right slot available. On the fitting screen to actually put it into firstly at power grid how to get more and use less so i put together a little selection of things here first of all we have two implants there's the squire power grid management implant available in forms that will boost your power grid from one percent to five percent they start off at about eight hundred thousand isk they go up to very expensive prices but that's an implant you plug it in it's going to take up slot 6 in your implant slots, so you are going to have to make some choices because there are clashes there. But I often find this 1% module or maybe the 2% module will make the difference between me being able to use a fit or not. The implant next to it, the shield upgrade implant, the gnome, it's going to reduce the power grid need of modules requiring shield upgrade skills. That's specifically really shield extenders because they do use quite a lot of power grid. That's going to take the same slot as that one, so you can't use them at the same time if we look at the attributes. This one's slot 6 also. Unfortunately, there's no way to simulate the impact of modules on a fit, but usually I just go for the boost to the actual amount of power grid I have using this implant right here, the Squire Power Management. They're very handy and not something the game will ever mention even exists. But there you go, that's Eve for you, that's why we're here. And for those of you not familiar with implants, we'll have a quick look. The best place to check them out in-game is in the market screen. And you'll find it under implants and boosters. Go down to implants, there's the attribute enhancers. And they go into implant slots 1 to 5. You're given examples of those very early game. They're the ones that will put your attributes such as wisdom and charisma up etc and then down below we have skill hardwiring there are all kinds of implants here that will improve ship performance in all kinds of ways from scanning to combat your tank your dps all kinds of stuff so have a little browse through here just to see what is available that's all i'll say for now implants probably deserve their own video at some stage but for now i'll just leave it there that's where you can see what implants are available probably the best place in game as i said and with an instant tidy of my hangar, we'll move on to these three here, the modules that will give you more power grid on your ship. Now we're just going to open these now, old friend, the compare screen. Best place to see them. So we've got the micro auxiliary power core, we've got the power diagnostic system and a reactor control unit. Here we've got this ticked to only show the attributes that differ. So we're going to tick these boxes as they are relevant. The power bonus, we want to know that. CPU usage may be handy and then we're going to click on these boxes down here because you do get more than just power grid off of one of these modules. Now as you can see here the micro auxiliary power core is the most expensive. It gives you a flat 10 megawatt boost to your power grid. Now if you're on a frigate or a destroyer this is a good option because your base power grid is less than 100 or likely to be less than 100 certainly on a tech one ship and therefore 10 power grid is a good boost to less than 100 base power grid however once you have over 100 power grid as a base on your ship's hull these two here are going to be the better option one adds 10 percent which as soon as you've got over 100 base power grid is going to be more than this 10 here and they're much cheaper and the power diagnostic system will boost your power grid by only 5% but it also boosts your capacitor recharge rate by 7.5% and, 
your capacitor capacity by 4% and your shield recharge rate by 7.5%. So if you don't need much power grid to get your fit to work, this is by far the best option. Micro auxiliary power core only use one and only use them on hulls that have less than 100 base power grid. And do note the compact versions of these modules will not only use less CPU to fit will, but will actually also give you an increase in performance. So those compact modules are also better performance wise. That's often the case, they're certainly always better than those Meta Zero modules as I told you in the last video. And these are of course all low slot modules. So they're the three modules that will boost your power grid on your fit. Here we have a rig that will do the same job. The small ancillary current router, it boosts the power grid capacity by 10%. So there's another way of boosting 10%, the equivalent of the reactor control unit in terms of the boost it's gonna give you, but it's gonna leave obviously the low slot free for something else if you use the rig slot to get the same result. So we've looked at implants, we've looked at the modules and the rig. It's the only rig that will do that job. And now we're going to look at the skills. So I'm going to open the skills section here. We're going to go to engineering. We're already on engineering. Right, the basic one for power grid is power grid management. For each level of this, you get 5% bonus to your ship's base power grid. Well worth learning. It will really help with your fits. Now down here, we have weapons upgrades. Now we'll actually talk about that again in the CPU section because this skill reduces the CPU requirement of turrets and launchers. However, once you've trained this to the required level, which is level four, you can train this skill here, advanced weapon upgrade, and this skill will cut by 2% the power grid requirements of your turrets and your launchers. So that can be a very handy skill to get into. So power grid management for base power grid, and then advanced weapon upgrades for less power grid use by your turrets and your launchers but you are going to have to train weapon upgrades up to level four first although it is useful of course because it's going to be giving you more cpu on your ship which is always handy as we'll discuss in a minute now they aren't the only ways to reduce the amount of power grid that your ship is consuming with the modules that it has fitted now options are of course going to be the compact versions of the modules i talked about that in the last video talking about the modules and how to compare them so if we just take an example here shield extenders are a very common module that people want to use the compact version for because it does save a couple of power grid there which is quite a lot when you're on a destroyer and you've only got less than 100 to start with and that is why they're so expensive because simply they are in demand a compact micro warp drive which is only it's not much of a difference on the small units so obviously the, the differences will become bigger as you're increasing the size of the module to go on bigger hulls but this is where you're going to eke out a few more just by changing these modules to the compact versions where you can armor plates are quite intensive on the power grid and again by using the compact version 20 can be saved which is actually quite a lot obviously these are very big armor plates these are going to go onto bigger ships so that's what i mean about the difference getting bigger as the modules themselves are getting larger but this one would go on a battleship maybe a battle cruiser and therefore the difference is much much bigger so compact versions of the modules that are using a lot of power grid to fit will save you some scaling up as the ship size is scaling up here we've got some rigs. Now, these aren't gonna help with the power grid or the consumption, but just be aware that if you fit any rig for your small turret weapons, so whether they're energy turrets, hybrid turrets, or projectile turrets, they are all gonna have a downside, which is a 10% increase to the power grid requirement of the turret itself, each turret. So. On a destroyer, that's quite a big goal. That's quite a big jump in requirement, so do bear that in mind. Putting in one of these rigs may suddenly make you short of power grid. The same applies to armor repair rigs. Those will also increase the power grid need by 10% of armor repair modules. So just something to bear in mind that some, some of the negatives will impact your ship in that way. And you can, of course, reduce those downsides for the use of rigs by training up the relevant rigging skill so if you learn the hybrid weapons rigging skill it will reduce the drawback i.e the additional power grid consumption so do remember to train your rigging skills there is a point to them for sure 
I think that's everything for Power Grid. Of course, guys, if I do forget anything or overlook anything, let me know in a comment. I'm more than welcome to be reminded of stuff or learn stuff from you guys, the viewers. So that, I think, is everything for the Power Grid. So remember, compact modules. These, you really want to pick the right one for your ship. I did see a Gnosis kill mail once upon a time that had, I think, four of these in the bottom slots. It was a very sad day for me just to see it. Anyway, let's move on now to CPU. But before we do, let's of course talk about the wonderful VEDMAX skin we have to give away yet again today. Leave your comments down below. Subscribe please if you haven't already. Leave a comment down below. Leave your in-game name in the comment. Any suggestions that I may have forgotten, as I mentioned earlier, that comment will qualify. Any comment will qualify. Let me know how useful you're finding these. Your feedback is really important to me so I know which kind of topics to invest my time into to produce the right videos that are actually useful to you guys so do let me know all feedback is always appreciated but i'd also appreciate it if you did press that subscription button too thank you very much anyway on with the show okay and back to the cpu situation and we've got basically the same setup here we've got a selection of implants we've got one module that will give us more cpu that is the coprocessor. I've got the upgraded version here. It gives you a better performance than the base model, uh, but it's the only module that you can put on your ship. It's a low slot module. I wouldn't recommend you got more than one of those squeezed into a fit. You might be look, uh, you might be better off looking elsewhere to reduce the CPU than using up two low slots for such a use. But going back to the implants, we've got five of them here, so we're going to stick those in the comparison screen. But a little bit of explanation will also be required, right? Right, the first one here, the high wall mining upgrade. That one's actually gonna reduce the penalty for mining upgrade modules. So your mining laser upgrades that reduce the CPU they need. The next one down here, the GNOME launcher CPU efficiency. I've got two versions here just to show you. That's a 1% reduction in the CPU requirement of your launchers, your missile launchers. And that's a 2% reduction. That's roughly the difference in price. Those prices may not be 100% accurate. Anyway, as I said, this is basically going to cut the CPU requirement of your missile launcher modules as you fit them. Obviously, the number of launchers you've got and how much CPU they need each is going to dictate how efficient this is to take up in that slot. Because as, as I mentioned before, we've got slot competition. The power grid implant was slot 6. This implant is also slot 6. And down here, we've got the Gypsy CPU management implant that comes in versions from 1 to 6% also slot six, but that's gonna give us a 1% CPU output bonus. And again, as with the power grid, and I've always found, especially with the alphas, with the lower skill alts that I use, you're usually short of either power grid or CPU, usually dependent on weapon system early on. So one or, one or the other in slot six will sort you out. They are cheap enough, at about 700 grand, Look, once you've made a little bit of money, which really won't take you long, especially if you follow some of my videos, you won't mind chopping and changing occasionally. Because, of course, do remember, you can't just take an implant out, it is destroyed, just like a rig when you remove it. The other option, of course, is to run more than one capsule, and then you could have them fitted in different ways with different implants, but we'll look at that in more detail another time. Anyway, so that's the selection. We've also got weapon upgrades, mustn't miss him out. That one simply is very similar to the missile launcher one it's a one percent reduction for this particular implant for the cpu requirement of your turrets so your guns whether you're better off in slot six having a one percent increase to your cpu of your hull or a one percent decrease in the cpu requirement of your missile launchers is going to be quite dependent and quite situational again i'd usually just go with the cpu management because that's going to be there for whatever ship you're flying regardless of the weapon system. I usually stick with the ones that just boost the base, but I'll leave you to do the maths and see which one is best for you. But there they are, so now you know. So we've covered the coprocessor, very simple. We've got some rigs here. The small processor overclocking unit that will give us a CPU output bonus of 7.1% here. But there is a penalty, minus 5% to shield recharge rate. So that may or may not be relevant. It's not a huge downside. And again, training up the electronics rigging skill will decrease the penalty that you're suffering from fitting the module. 
Next up, we've got the small liquid cooled electronics rig. That's kind of cut the CPU usage of modules that, that require the electronics upgrade skill. Now that's a little bit odd because if we do actually look in the skill section, electronics upgrades, the only modules that really applies to are the coprocessor and the signal amplifier. That's a rig that will save you some CPU to fit something to give you more CPU. It's certainly not a rig lot I've used, but it's there. Again, at least with the rig, you can use the simulation fit to actually see what solution is the best for you. Next up, we've got the small power grid subroutine maximizer. What a cool name. This one is going to reduce the CPU need for all of your power upgrade modules. So the ones we saw to upgrade the power grid, the auxiliary power core, the power, power diagnostic system, etc. This will reduce the CPU requirement of them. So if you were quite tight on power grid and CPU, this might be a solution worth looking at. Again, try it in your simulated screen. There's no drawback with this module. You're just going to get a 15% reduction on the CPU needed to fit those modules. So give it a go in the simulated screen. It work out better than just boosting the CPU you've got. And also bear in mind that any missile rigs are going to increase the CPU requirement of your missile launchers. So you've got a lot of launchers. Putting one of those on can really screw up your CPU requirement. Compact modules, again, are always an option. I've just put the right modules in this folder now. So if we compare these two shield hardeners, I just want to show you something you may not have noticed before. If I turn on the CPU usage and the activation cost. So what I'm doing here is comparing the multi-spectrum to the resistance specific EM hardener. So you will note that the specific hardeners use more CPU than multi-spectrum. So another way of saving a little bit of CPU, maybe going to multi-spectrum instead of a damage specific hardener, you may lose a little bit of tank, but it will save you the CPU, you may make the fit work. The downside is we'll look at in the capacitor section is that multi-spectrum hardeners use twice as much capacitor to cycle. But that is a way of sneaking a little bit more CPU just by moving your fit around. Skills wise, if we have a look Again, we're looking mainly in the engineering section. We've got CPU management, obviously. 5% bonus CPU output on the ship's hull per level. We've got weapons upgrades, which we looked at in the power grid section because you've got to go through here to get to advanced weapon upgrades to reduce the CPU required by your turrets and your launchers, and also smart bombs. Electronic upgrades is the one we looked at. It's a little bit odd. It's reducing the CPU requirement of coprocessors. So it's, I kind of guess it's increasing the boost you're getting from coprocessors by trading that one. Energy grid upgrades is reducing the CPU requirement of those modules that boost your power grid. And that is about it for the CPU situation. Again, if I have overlooked anything, do let me know. But I think that is about it. I did have a good look through and looked up everything that I could find. So we'll leave it there for now, my friends. Do remember to comment down below and do remember to put your in-game name in that comment. Any questions, any suggestions, pointing out anything I've forgotten, feel free down below. And do check, please, if you leave a comment, do check under the video that it appears. There has been an issue with some disappearing comments lately that YouTube are looking into. I uh, got in touch with them and they actually responded. I was quite impressed. So do double check. If a comment disappears, it's not me being weird. I promise you. And do please leave the video a like if you have enjoyed it and found it useful down below. Because that really helps the video get spread by that algorithm. Subscribe please if you haven't already. And click that notification bell to know when the next video is coming up. It will be at the weekend. We'll look at the capacitor, the navigation and the targeting aspects of your ship's fit and how you can adjust those in your favour. But for now, my friends, take care of yourselves, each other. Remember, even is believing, fly brave and goodbye.